Gee, Germany, you have made a mess of things. Does Germany really look worse than Schultz when he had his, you know, Captain, Captain Eyebrow patch on? To me, yes. The answer is yes. I think that German economy, German industry, the German electricity sector is looking worse than Scholz's face looked when he had his accident. So what are we going to do today? We'll let the news speak for itself. I've got a whole uh, lineup of news articles uh, to explain what is going on. And in this video, we get to see the latest news on the German industry woes, how we did get here. A look on the map, because that's why you are here. If you are new to this channel, that's what I do. I make sure that you get a look on industry, on electricity, on on the power sector. And what we do is we take a look at the satellite picture from Google Maps. And how to fix it, I am going to show you on December 2nd. Now, a little preface here. What has gone wrong in Germany basically looks like this, right? It's not, it's not this news article, but it is these windmills. So in 2000, Gerhard Schröder became the Chancellor of Germany. And Gerhard Schröder was a gas lobbyist. So he struck a deal with the Greens, and the Greens really hated nuclear very much. So in order to make room for more gas, what he did was he struck a deal with the Greens. He said, listen, if I get to build more gas infrastructure, and if I get to build more gas plants, then you get to build some windmills and some solar panels, but you'll get to close the nuclear power plants. And that's what happened in Germany. This has basically been a train wreck in the making from 2000 until now. Germany used to have 24 gigawatts of nuclear power plant. So Gerhard Schröder, he basically, he, he invited Gazprom and Putin over to come to Germany and to make a lot of money in Western Europe. One of the things that you could see happening, for instance, that made it clear that gas was becoming very big or Russian gas was getting very big in Europe was that, uh, for instance, Schalke 04, which used to be a very large and successful football club in Germany, they were suddenly wearing Gazprom on their jersey. And I believe that there were other sports uh, sports uh, teams as well that, that, that had Gazprom on their jersey. So... What happened? Time went on. They indeed started to, you know, close nuclear power plants. They started to build more coal plants. They started to build more gas plants. And they started to build a lot of renewables, wind and solar in particular. Now, in 2011, Fukushima happened. Germany was freaked out about it. And Angela Merkel was basically mulling over a re-entry into nuclear energy. Said, well, if it happened to Japan, it can happen to us. So we are going to we are going to say goodbye to to nuclear. This was also a political calculation because at that moment her party w was losing an election in Germany somewhere. So she thought if I expedite the nuclear exit, um, then we might still win that election. But they lost it anyway. So. They threw away the baby, the nuclear baby, with the bathwater. Now, some years later, 2024 or 2022, let, let's say 2014, Russia invades Crimea and they annex Crimea. At that moment, we in Europe, we should have been become very critical and we should have thought, well, is this increased dependence on Russian gas, all of this economic influence and all this economic dependency that we have on Russian gas. Is it worth the risk? And back then we didn't we didn't do we didn't do the due diligence that we should have done. Come 2022, a thousand days ago, Russia invades Ukraine again. So we get a huge gas crisis in Europe, right? It, it was enormous and you're going to see the graphs down below. Now, long story short, what happened in Europe during all that time was uh, wages got higher. The industry was offshoring more than it should have. So we were selling a lot of our industrial capacity to China. And China was taking over all this business and saying, yes, please, thanks, give me your business. We want to make these components. We want to make these goods for you. Germany basically started contracting slightly 
other countries started contracting more. Germany still thought that they could be an industrial power base for Europe. But with all those investments in renewables, renewables that are, in principle, unreliable, they simply built themselves into a corner. They were so dependent on fossil fuels from Russia, they didn't have any nuclear anymore. 24 gigawatts was closed. And in the end, what this means is that you will get these, these, these energy crises because you don't have your, your, your baseload nuclear anymore to basically stabilize your economy to make sure that your, your, your largest industries can keep running. On top of that, we get European legislation, such as the carbon taxing that is going on. And what you end up with is a Germany that is in, ve in a very bad shape. Industrially, econom economically, it just is bad. So currently, Europe's economic woes may worsen as key power prices rise. So what you see over here, your, the Europe spot base power prices, try to say that five times, what you see is overall during 2023 and 2024, they were reasonably high. Sometimes they drop to significant lows. Uh, you can see that mainly in France and in Spain. It's no coincidence that these are countries with nuclear power and renewables. And what you also see is that Italy and Germany, they remain relatively high and they had some pretty high price spikes. Currently, the price is around 100 to 140 euros per megawatt hour in Europe. And it's probably going to rise a bit more when the demand for heating comes in. Now, he why is heating relevant? It's quite simple. We use natural gas to heat our homes and to heat our businesses. But we also use natural gas for our chemistry. And we also use natural gas for power production. So... All of this natural gas, all of these, basically these different demands are competing for natural gas. And so somebody has to either deliver more natural gas to keep the prices low, or what you see is the demand keeps going up and the production of gas basically remains behind, which means that those who can pay more for gas, they will get the gas, but the price will become higher because there's more demand for it. Supply and demand. It's pretty basic. Now, over here, what you can see is you can you can clearly see the war. Now, this is a very small picture. Unfortunately, I can't enlarge it really. These are the wholesale electricity prices in key European countries, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Netherlands, and Poland. We can all see the price spike from the 2022 invasion, uh, the gas crisis that ensued. Uh, but we can also see if we would it's it's unfortunate i can't plot it any clearer but if you would see if you would plot a trend line you can see a rising trend line and what's also noticeable is that the wholesale electri electricity prices in germany were higher than in france germany did not have any did, did only have four or five gigawatts of nuclear left now they have zero left france had 50 gigawatts of nuclear and and, and their prices simply are lower now if we look at the output of key German industries, and this is a very important metric, if you would plot trend lines and all of these, they would be, they would be declining. You know, steel, they're producing less steel than they were in 2005, and the trend line is clearly dropping. What you also can see, you see, is this, 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 this spike, this downward spike in 2008. That was the big financial crisis of 2008. That, that spike is pretty much everywhere except in batteries. And why batteries is here, I don't know. It's, 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 it's basically a weird, the weird duck because it's not a big industry compared to steel or compared to chemicals or compared to chemistry, fertilizer. Now, what you see, you, 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 plot, a, you plot a trend line, you see a downward, downward uh, slope at steel, chemistry, chemi chemicals, fertilizers, New cars, turbines, and engines. Turbines and engines, you can see, a, a, you know, it's, it's, it's a different graph. But this tells you everything you need to know because batteries, in all honesty, it's, it's not that interesting compared to the rest. Steel is really a primary, uh, primary resource that you need for a lot of other economic uh, activities. Chem chemicals, the same thing. Fertilizers, the same thing. Cars, basically, it tells you 
how good, how strong an economy, how strong an economy is, whether people are actually buying cars, etc. You know, it tells you something about the state of a country. Now, basically, all that you can see here is that the the, the rising wages and the rising prices for energy they drive the production down. Now. Just here, uh, other news article, insolvencies in Germany up 22.9% year on year in October. So this year in October, there were 22.9% more insolvencies than the year before. This is interesting over here. Collapsing demand from Germany and abroad, high costs for energy and skilled workers, considerable burdens from taxes and bureaucracy, all of this is putting pressure on business prospects and the financial situation, the German Chambers of Commons, Commerce and Industry said in a response to the figures. Germany is the canary in the coal mine currently. They are experiencing so much pain from these high energy prices, from this inflation. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just going to cause a lot of trouble. Other news, Ford to cut European jobs as EV shift, Chinese rivals take toll. European job cuts come amid challenges to EV to EV shift in Europe. Job cuts primarily in Germany, UK affects 2.3% of the global workforce. This is 170,000 people worldwide, but obviously uh, Germany, where wages are higher and where the costs are higher, that's the place where you're going to cut costs. If you want to cut costs, you want to make sure that your profits don't your profits don't get in danger. You first go to the high cost items that you can cut. Ford urges German government for better EV support. And the irony is, I made a video about this at the beginning of this this cycle, and 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 people were basically attacking me, saying, "No, no, no, EVs are are the bee's knees, and uh, there's nothing wrong with EVs." And it's true, there's nothing wrong with EVs. Personally, I would love to own an EV. You know, my, my brother-in-law, he used to own an EV. I got to drive around in that car and I loved it. You know, there's no vibrations. It's just very smooth and you can just zoom along. And it, it's an amazing car. I would love to own an EV, but I can't afford an EV, honestly. People who think that EVs are, you know, somehow affordable... The average car price in the United States is like $58,000 at this moment. $58,000. I couldn't even buy a new car that's, that costs $20,000. Uh, I, I, I buy, uh, I drive a second-hand Volkswagen Polo that cost me 6,500 euros two years ago. No, what? Three years ago. And I need to maintain it. I rather would, I rather would drive a EV, but I can't afford a, a 10,000 euro car at this moment. So here's what you see, right? This is one of the first things that, that happens. But it, get, it gets worse. The, the shape of Germany is really looking, it, it, you know, Germany is really looking rough at this moment. Volkswagen, here we go. Volkswagen plans for factory closures cross several, Volkswagen's plans for factory closures cross several red lines, called Works Council Chief said. So this is the entrance to the Volkswagen Osnabrück, uh, plant and over here what they say right uh, Volkswagen is planning to shut factories in every scenario presented to labor representatives putting both factions so the workers and the company uh, on a collision course in a dispute over pay and jobs next one right we go up Volkswagen enters third round of wage talks as strikes looms. And over here you see people from, again, the Volkswagen Osnabrück factory. And they, ba they basically demand work for all factories. And they also say, listen, there's, there's, too much, there's too much fighting alongside ourselves. These are all boxing gloves, by the way. So the German unions have proposed 1.5 billion euros in savings. Management has suggested wage cuts and planned closures, right? And this is this is the problem. The talks are over wages for 120,000 of Volkswagen's roughly 300,000 staff 
in Germany, employed at six plant employed at six plants governed by a separate collective wage agreement to the rest of the workforce. You have to understand, Volkswagen also includes Audi. Volkswagen also includes uh, Porsche. There's also a uh, truck company, Man. Right. So, so the three hundred thousand. There's also Audi, Porsche, Man, and other, and other people in there. Now, this is this this really stings, right? Volkswagen has demanded a ten percent wage cut, arguing it needs to slash costs and boosts pro, boost profits to defend market share in the face of cheap competition from China and a drop in European car demand. Right? Talking about myself, just just looking at myself, I can't afford a a thirty thousand euro car. I can't afford a twenty thousand euro car. You know, I I will not buy a new Volkswagen. Period. I will not do it. I can't afford it. If you want me to buy a new Volkswagen, you should go to my Patreon page and become a paying member. But in all honesty, um, I, I think that European cars are too expensive at this moment. And this is a real problem. So next one, Volkswagen Union proposes 1.6 billion of cuts, but no planned closures. And this is a real problem for Volkswagen. Union proposes concessions worth of 1.5 billion in savings. Stakeholders like controlling families should pitch in, but there's a threat of a major dispute if Volkswagen press ahead, presses ahead with, cla- with planned closures. This is a real problem. They want to close, I believe, uh, Emden, and they want to close Osnabrück, at least, right? So let's go to the map, right? Over here, we have a map of Germany. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a, it's a satellite map, so you don't see everything as clear as, as I would like you to see. But we go to the northwest over here, right? This is what we call Emden. And Emden, they have a huge Volkswagen, uh, Volkswagen manufacturing plant over here. 10,000 people work here. You can also see 10,000 cars being parked there. Those are cars that are freshly produced and that need to be distributed to people to 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 car dealers where they get sold to consumers so this is one of the plants that they want to close right an enormous an enormous an enormous uh car manufacturing plant now if we zoom out we go to osnabrück this is the other plant that they want to close that i know of Several thousand people work here. Remember, there's 300,000 people working for Volkswagen in Germany alone. If we go to uh, to Wolfsburg, this is the main uh, the main site for Volkswagen. This is where Volkswagen basically uh, has their main operation. This is a huge factory. I believe some somewhere between 20 and 25,000 people work here. Now, this is a this is a YouTube channel about energy. And economics obviously is important. Uh, what you can see over here, this is pretty interesting, is that Volkswagen has their own coal-fired power plant over here and over here. I believe that this one runs on gas. I don't, I'm not sure whether they actually burn coal in this plant, but they do in this plant, right? That's where they get their electricity from. And there's another plant over here. I wonder what, what this is, whether it, whether it is oil or gas, but it is a power plant. That's for sure. So over here you have the stacks. The boiler rooms are probably in these buildings over here. And then over here, that's where your power conversion uh, stuff is. In any case, 120,000 people are about to say goodbye to their job. No, not 120,000. I'm, I'm pulling pulling fears out of my ass. Um, so the interesting thing here is that over here in this map you can see where the cuts are planned so we have emden hanover we have kassel brunswick with it which is braunschweig in 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 in, in german salzgitter and wolfsburg that's basically where the uh where the uh, fifty thousand. oh no that's that's basically where the one hundred and twenty thousand people work that are about to lose their job but this is not just about cars. I don't just want to talk about cars today. I want to talk about the German economy because the German economy is is, is in a bad place. German econ- German economy minister German economy minister urges quick end to ThyssenKrupp steel crisis. Right, this is from October 9th. This is from a while ago. ThyssenKrupp has pro- proposed direct reduction plant at its steel hub in 
Duisburg under review stoking fears over the conglomerate's future direction. So Thyssen Group, they have blast furnace steel production. They make carbon steel in Duisburg. It's really a huge facility. We will look at the facility in a couple of seconds. Um, and, and they promised the government that they would build a direct reduction plant, which basically involves uh, using hydrogen instead of carbon. And the government says, okay, we want to pay 2 billion euros in order to get that done, uh, get this done. And this also requires Thyssen Group to uh, invest another billion. Now, if we go to the next one over here, Germany's Thyssen Group reviews green steel production plants, right? Shares fall. Again, the same matter. Uh, they basically say, oh, well, amidst uh, all of these, uh, all of these, uh, economic troubles that we are experiencing we are unsure whether we can invest 1 billion in a green steel production plant now if we go to germany this is an other map right over here we have a map of germany you can see a lot of red place markers over here in the west of germany that's the rural area there's there's 18 million people living there and that's where all the major industry is now if we zoom into Cologne, for instance, we start all the way down the south. What we get over here is uh, large chemistry plants, right? Uh, oh, wow, they have, a, they have, a, they have a, an electrolyzer over here. I just noticed. So they have an electrolyzer. This is a large chemistry plant, chemistry plant, dot biodiesel over here, right? Leondel, Leondel, Basel, uh, they, they also produce chemistry. Over here we have a, uh, a refinery, All right? This is this is this is Cologne. If we go up further north over here, this is the Ford manufacturing plant where they are about to cut four thousand jobs. So over here we have uh, Bayer, for instance, Big Pharma, and, and then over here, Lonexess and such. Uh, still a lot of chemistry uh, that is being done, and and, that, and that's high intensity chemistry, right? So over here, I don't know what this is. Again, Chem Park, it says. So it's, again, chemistry. Then we go over here, again, more chemistry. And this is all heavy industry, right? This is not, this is not small industry. This is big industry. Uh, we go over here. What we see over here, I believe that this is an aluminium factory. Oh, no, it's, it's 3M. So, again, it's, uh, it's chemistry. Axo Nobel, they make foodstuffs. Um, I, I mean, it's it's just it's just unimaginable the the the, sheer, the 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 sheer scale of the industry in Germany. Over here we have Bus F again, a large industry. But over here, aluminium, right? The question is whether they are still producing aluminium because aluminium factories in Europe are basically shutting down one by one. The Netherlands used to have two; they no longer have an aluminium factory. But now we go to where we really want to be. This is Thyssen Group. This is one of their steel production facilities, right? This isn't even the biggest one. What's interesting about this one is you can clearly see uh, the gas plant over here, right? So this is a gas plant. It doesn't run on natural gas, but it runs on syngas. So what happens is if you have a blast furnace steel production facility, you get carbon monoxide as a byproduct. You mix that carbon monoxide with hydrogen, which makes syngas, and that syngas can be burned. And that's basically uh, their own power production facility. They burn syngas, which in the end just turns into uh, CO2 and water, by the way. Over here is ArcelorMittal, but the, this one here, this is the big ticket. This is the biggest steel manufacturing facility in Germany. Thyssen Group, right? Over here you have the blast furnace steel production facility. Uh, you see the coal being stacked on the left-hand side. All of this red stuff, that's iron ore. Then the white stuff, that's that's lime or, or carbon. You know, it's, it's, it's calcium carbonate, magnesium carbonate. That's what you use to uh, flux impurities out of the, out of the blast furnace steel, uh, out of the uh, blast furnace where you produce your steel. And again, over here, you have a power plant that uses the syngas. So what you see here is that the scale of German industry in this area is enormous, right? You see all these yellow 
these yellow things, these yellow uh, figures that I made, where you can see all these large chemistry plants, all these large steel production plants, plants where they uh, produce aluminium and such. But you also notice that there are a lot of these red place markers. Now, and over here you have these orange, um, orange figures. That's where the Germans extract lignite, and lignite is basically uh, brown coal. Brown coal gets burned in these large coal plants, and that's basically what powers the entire industry over here. If somebody tells you that Germany is fantastic and they are running their industry on wind and solar, then you just have to say it's bollocks. Uh, they run their industry on natural gas and on coal whenever they can because it's the most reliable source of electricity that is left in Germany because they close 24 gigawatts of nuclear power. And that's how Germany basically uh, set a trap for themselves. That's how they are hurting their own economy. That's why the German economy looks very bad these days. I hope that I've shown you sufficient proof to uh, basically prove that this is the case. Steel is hurting bad, aluminium is hurting badly, fertilizer is hurting badly, uh, chemical production. I mean, you've seen you've seen the the news article. I'm going to share it with you because obviously that's the information that you need. And that's why I believe that Germany looks worse than Schultz when he fell on his face. And with that, you've made it to the end of this video. If you haven't already and you want to uh, see all the videos that I produce, please press the subscribe button. And also click the bell notification button so you don't miss a, any video that I make. If you uh, want to contribute to the discussion, please leave a comment down below. And if you haven't already, please leave a like. Now, if you want to support the channel, if you want to support me, keep the lights on. Please, please consider becoming a paying Patreon member. Any help would be greatly appreciated. Now, thank you all for watching and may the strong force be with you. Bye-bye.